Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I woke up this morning pleasantly surprised. Everything uh, moving up quite significantly here. Bitcoin uh, hit 10,700 a few minutes ago. Uh, right now trading at 10,694. Ethereum now over 200, trading uh, just over 200. At 240 and XRP trading at 28.5 cents. Uh, the market's looking great. This is Bitcoin on the hourly. We saw a bit of a move up here. Uh, and now a little bit of a correction. Go to XRP uh, and it was moving quite well yesterday as well. Okay, went up as high as 29.2, now coming down a bit, correcting, but uh, it's out of this level of support right here and it's making its way back up. So that's a really good sign for the space and uh, hopefully we'll hear even more good news in the near future. It's been quite a morning on Twitter and in crypto news. This is from XRP Veteran. That's at XRP underscore veteran on Twitter. Uh, and he sent this to me. Breaking news. Santander to connect Latin America to Ripple powered remittance service. And so the Spanish mega bank Santander Group is expanding its use of Ripple technology. The bank is building a payment corridor that would let customers in Latin America send money to the US instantly for free via OnePay FX. A mobile app that uses Ripple's X current software, officials told Coindesk. Currently, only customers in the UK and Spain can send money to the US over OnePayFX, while the bank would not reveal how many Latin American countries it plans on connecting to the corridor. Santander serves Brazil, Uruguay, Chile, and Mexico. So opening more corridors to the United States via OnePayFX, amazing. This is the process of building the network. And guys, we're going to talk about why this network is so important with regards to a specific company that also did this. Their founder, hugely influential, and even wrote a book about this. So we will touch on that in a bit. So in this article, it says, like Santander's DLT efforts to date, the new payment capability will not involve XRP, the cryptocurrency that Ripple periodically sells to fund operations and that powers a separate XRP product. Okay, we know what XRP is, Coindesk. Uh, last year, Santander introduced one pay effects in four countries that account for more than half the bank's profits, Spain, the UK, Brazil, and Poland. So what this will do will promote volume growth. So while Santander would not reveal its transaction volumes for one pay effects, it said those volumes tripled from January 2019 to June, and volumes for Spain increased by 120% year over year in April. Expanding OnePayFX will mean a bigger change for some Latin American countries who will go from making international transfers and branches to instant online payments than for European customers, said the manager. Uh, it's going to be good for all the customers, in my opinion. The more you can expand that network, the better it'll be for everybody on so many levels. Even some levels that aren't quite obvious until you really look at the details that involve certain countries, uh, specifically developing countries that rely on remittance services for their economies. And it's great that this article came out when it did because Matt Linney or Liney on Twitter tagged me in this site here and it was from the IMF's working paper. So the impact of remittances on economic activity, the importance of sectoral linkages. And I'm gonna read you a little of this. Remittances inflows have increased significantly in recent years and have become the main financial external inflow in some developing countries, surpassing other inflows that traditionally play an important role in these countries, such as official development assistance and foreign direct investment. The World Bank estimates that remittances now make up about a third of total financial inflows in developing countries. Like other regions, Africa saw large increases in the last decade. According to World Bank Migration and Remittances Database, remittances currently represent for some African countries countries a significant share, up to 22% of their 2017 gross domestic product, their GDP. The magnitude of the economic impact of remittances on the receiving countries depends on how this money is spent by the recipient households. If these flows increase consumption in sectors that have strong sectoral linkages with other economic sectors, the positive effect of these remittances may propagate to these sectors and have an amplified aggregate effect on their entire economy. So essentially this explains, and this is from the IMF once again, so thank you, Matthew Liney on Twitter, Linny Liney. I hope Matt's watching so he can correct me on his Twitter handle name. Anyway, what I was saying, uh, this from the IMF and their explanation on how important remittance services truly are. And so again, back to the Santander piece, building these corridors, right? Opening them up to more destinations for more countries to be able to send from Latin America to the United States and vice versa, a very important step in getting this ball rolling. And so world economy is kind of a bit of a theme today uh, because Crypto Wolf sent me this on Twitter. At XRP Crypto Wolf on Twitter, Binance plans to launch Venus, similar to Facebook's Libra cryptocurrency. And so 
when we heard that Facebook was launching a cryptocurrency, essentially a stable coin pegged one to one to the dollar, governments were up in arms and a lot of the public were uh, suggesting, why would we trust Facebook with our money? Well, would you guys trust Binance with your money? And so this is essentially what's happening. Binance planning to launch Venus, similar to Facebook's upcoming cryptocurrency Libra. And so Binance is essentially doing the same thing. The world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, is planning to launch Venus, called in an independent regional version of Libra. So they said they're going to launch this because it has a presence in several countries, has its native blockchain Binance chain in place, as well as it hopes to break the financial hegemony and reshape the world's financial system. We believe that in the near and long term, stable coins will progressively replace traditional fiat currencies in countries around the world and bring a new and balanced standard of the digital economy, Binance co-founder Yi He told the block. She added, we hope to achieve a vision that is to reshape the world financial system, allow countries to have more tangible financial services and infrastructures, protect their financial security, and increase the economic efficiency of countries. So boom, were we expecting Binance to come out with a stable coin? I know I wasn't. Uh, and you know, it sounds like they're looking to do all the things that Facebook is looking to do. Now, they have the technology in place, they have the people on staff to create this. Could they have just copied Facebook's idea? Perhaps. The one thing Facebook has over Binance is way more users than Binance. Facebook has already set up that network of people. And so I could see if Facebook's Libra coin was ready right now, that they could hit the ground running and really move with this thing. I mean, I guess there's always that whole issue of the trust, which they may have had to have overcome had their coin been ready right now. But people trust Binance. I know I love Binance. Binance is a great service. I use Binance all the time. I have an affiliate link in all my descriptions. So if you guys are looking to open a Binance account, you can use my affiliate link if you want. But no, I don't put affiliate links in the description unless I truly believe in something. And and Binance is certainly one of those companies. So this idea of financial hegemony, as mentioned in this block article, and um, reshaping the world's financial system, I'm thinking that there are a lot of countries out there, well, I know, there are a lot of countries out there that really do need a stable currency. And I don't think Binance is targeting Western countries, so to speak, European countries, or even North America, the United States and Canada. I think that they're focused on countries where their currencies really are in the dumps. You know, those countries where hyperinflation has really affected their currency to the fact to the point where people can't buy food anymore you know they're going through the streets with wheelbarrows full of their devalued currency and are hard pressed to uh, even be able to buy the necessities of life now this is a bigger issue this isn't just this doesn't just have to do with their currency becoming overvalued there are a lot of issues at play that allows that kind of thing to happen but is this a good idea and uh, especially for Binance to be putting out uh, their own version of a stable coin yet to be determined but I do want to hear what you guys think in the comments section. I saw this too from the Tron Weekly, the Tron Weekly Journal. Ripple focuses on the bigger picture. And here's what that is. Going on with the theme today, it was really interesting that I found, uh, or at least these articles were sent to me. I found some of them on Twitter. Uh, people's tagging me and stuff in Twitter all the time. Guys, if you have something that you think I should be talking about, tag me on Twitter. Sometimes I'll get to it, sometimes I won't, just depends. But we were talking about the IMF, we were talking about Santander uh, opening up new corridors and connecting the uh, Latin America to the United States. Now Binance coin with their stable coin, uh, and finally this here. So one thing is for sure, Ripple seems to have a plan for becoming one of the leading cryptocurrencies of the future. Connecting with all the banks is just a means to an end. Here is how it is likely to all go down. And so I read this article before I read that article, and I forgot to actually mention this here from XRP Veteran, the next announcement. And this has to do with what I'm about to read, so just bear with me here for a sec, guys. The next time you hear Ripple announce another partner that is using X current, do not be dismayed. Realize that Ripple is doing exactly what it should, building another corridor for XRP liquidity. And when you hear all those with fear, uncertainty, and doubt say, but it's just X current, banks will never use XRP. You can just smile. Consciously aware that the XRP game plan is being played perfectly, knowing that XRP needs X current to succeed. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is the fact that you need to build those corridors in order for XRP to succeed and XRP underscore veteran gets it. And so this is what this is about here as well. Whoever is first to dominate the most important segment of a market with viral potential will be the last mover in the whole industry, says Peter Thiel, an American entrepreneur and venture capitalist who co-founded none other than PayPal. Thiel's why statement comes from his book Zero to One published in September 2014 and written by Thiel and a student Blake Masters. This 
particular quote is followed by an explanation of how PayPal managed to go big. The company did not want to acquire random users. Instead, they targeted those who would be the most valuable to them, those who would start depending on it. Their first goal was to focus on immigrants who left their home countries to work abroad and send money home. Uh, and so before PayPal, they depended on Western Union to do so. PayPal made it effortless, but the transactions were too infrequent. Uh, the company decided to take a different approach, which is why they started targeting eBay power sellers, professional vendors who sold and bought goods on eBay auction marketplace. Soon enough, transactions surged and PayPal became the payments platform for eBay. So for those of you guys too young to remember this back in the late 90s, I'm assuming, or early 2000s, eBay and PayPal, they were just new companies. And so none of those cooperative uh, agreements existed until eventually PayPal saw the opportunity there and became the payments platform for eBay. And the rest is history. Lots of people use PayPal now. Uh, PayPal seems a little antiquated today when we have cryptocurrency technology, blockchain technology, right? In order to fulfill those same transactions, we've got Ripple, we've got XRP that can settle payments instantly, no matter the size. And this article continues, how do XRP and Ripple fit into this? Uh, what does this have to do with Ripple and XRP? Looking closely at what Ripple has been doing with the banks, it is clear that the company is making pretty much the same move when it comes to bringing cryptocurrencies to banks. Similarly to Thiel's advice not to try to acquire random users, Ripple opted to target a smaller niche market segment. Bitcoin, for example, has no target audience apart from people in general. Its use cases and its brand have made it big, but for anyone else to come out of Bitcoin's shadows, they must become the primary solution in a specific niche market segment as PayPal did with eBay. Uh, in this case, Ripple is PayPal, the traditional banks are eBay. The longer we observe the two firms' methods, the more parallels emerge, which leads to an important conclusion, that Ripple aims at a much bigger picture than most other cryptocurrencies. So essentially, guys, the important take-home point here is that Ripple is trying to be like PayPal in that regard. They're not targeting random users. They really are laser focused on the one thing that matters to build the network. And as Thiel writes up here, and this is really important to remember, whoever is first to dominate the most important segment of a market with viral potential will be the last mover in the whole industry. And you know, a lot of people talk about being the first mover and why that's so important. I saw this article here, the last mover advantage. And if you take a look at this, I think this will make sense to you. Last mover advantage, network effects were vital in building these companies. Facebook, LinkedIn, and Yelp, and many others' success relied on Metcalf's law. But when our mobile phones became our address books, network effects came more easily. It feels like the combination of fast, free data, ample venture capital money, low interest rates, easy outsourced labor, even cheaper hosting costs, improvements in processing power make new companies easier to scale than ever before. We've seen WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instacart, Slack, TransferWise, all rising to multi-billion dollar valuations in less than five years. Where does this end and what is the ultimate future scenario for this trend? Well, they talk a little bit about Facebook. Even if you were to build a better Facebook today, uh, it would unlikely get replaced because Facebook already has that 2 billion plus users, maybe even 3 billion. I don't, I don't know the number at this point, but there are a lot that even if you were to try to replace Facebook with another social network today, it would be virtually impossible just because the network is so big. You'd have to get 3 billion or 2 billion, whatever the number is, to jump from Facebook onto the next thing. And I know there were companies that tried like Elo. I remember Elo came out, uh, I believe in the earlier part of this decade, maybe in the late uh, 2000s even. I signed up for it thinking like, oh, maybe these guys could take over Facebook naively. It must have been in 20, 2008 or 2009 because Facebook was not nearly as big as it is today. And of course, who has heard of Allo today? Nobody. The platform was garbage. Nevertheless, that's a sidebar. Last mover advantage is important when you've built the network out because then companies won't have a choice. And that is exactly what Ripple is doing. They're building their network. They're creating new corridors like the Santander Latin America, United States corridors. We're hearing about new avenues being built all the time. And guys, that is why Ripple will succeed. They are the first to dominate the most important segment of a market with viral potential, and they will have that last mover advantage for their entire industry. Anyways, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.